ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जया मुदीर नष्ट प्रयेश भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्ठिकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंद गोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो टुडे वी विल हैव अ क्विक ओवरव्यू ऑफ द सेकंड कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम सो वी हैड इन द फर्स्ट कैंटो वी हैड 19 चैप्टर्स and first canto briefly in the first chapter we had six questions by the sages of naimisharanya so the chronology of shrimad bhagavatam is parikshit maharaj is hearing from sukadev goswami and that conversation is being quoted by suto goswami to the sages of naimisharanya so uh that that conversation is being narrated to the sages of naimisharanya so we have six question by the sages in, uh, in the first chapter then in the second chapter third chapter shuto goswami gives answer to those question and in the fourth chapter again there are some uh, new set of questions regarding the history and author of shrimad bhagavatam and uh, uh, question about sukadev goswami question about parikshit maharaj just a moment yeah so in the fourth chapter we have some fresh questions regarding uh, shukdev goswami parikshit maharaj and the history and author of shrimad bhagavatam now fourth fifth sixth chapter describes the history and author of shrimad bhagavatam which is how shila vyasdev got inspired from narad muni those vyasa narad samvad 4 5 6 then in the seventh chapter we have the son of drona who is ashwatthama panist how ashwatthama attempted to kill parikshit maharaj also and he already killed the five sleeping sons of pandavas and then arjuna punishes ashwatthama and again ashwatthama releases one brahmastha finally krishna protects the bomba guttara and protects parikshit maharaj then krishna is about to leave then chapter 8 kunti stuti after kunti maharani stuti also krishna wanted to leave then yudhishthir maharaj comes he is lamenting nobody can convince him so krishna takes yudhishthir maharaj to vishma vishma dev glorified then vishma stuti and then uh, krishna is finally leaving hastinapur going to dwarka chapter 10 chapter 11 krishna meeting dwarka vasis and then in the 12th chapter again the sages of naimisharan reminds shruta goswami this you have taken a detour of so many different past times of krishna now get back to the original question which is the which is about parikshit maharaj tell us about parikshit maharaj then uh, parikshit maharaj is glorified then in the later chapters we have seen that how disappearance of krishna arjuna returns from dwarka and then disappearance of krishna and before that dhritarashtra is going to forest and then in the in the last part of the first canto we have seen how parikshit maharaj is dealing with kali how he received the curse uh, from the brahmana boy named shringi who is son of shamikrishi and that past time when parikshit maharaj went to forest he was thirsty and he wanted some water but shamikrishi was in deep trance so he could not reply anything and parikshit maharaj got angry which is also by the will of the supreme lord because he wanted to manifest shrimad bhagavatam and uh, therefore uh, the brahmana shan shringi got angry on parikshit maharaj 
and he gave a curse that Parikshit Maharaj will die within seven days. When Parikshit Maharaj got this news, he immediately detached himself from all material things, went to the bank of Ganges. Already some sages were assembled there and Shukadev Goswami also comes. And Parikshit Maharaj asked this question, how to live and how to live? While we are in this world, how to live in this world? So that's the first question. And second question is how to live when we are going away from this world. So at the time of death, what should be our consciousness? So these are the two questions of Parikshit Maharaj. And uh, the answer to this question is the beginning of second canto. So in the, the, the second canto is comparatively a smaller canto. So there only there are 10 chapters. So in the first chapter, 1 to 11 verses. So the uh, question of Parikshit Maharaj is how to live and how to live. In one word, the answer is bhakti. Throughout our life also, we should perform bhakti. And at the time of death, we should intensify our bhakti. So superiority of bhakti is the main topic, main theme of the answer of the question by Parikshit Maharaj. So first of all, uh, Shukadev Goswami appreciates the question. This is a good question. Athato Brahma Jigyasa. One should ask question like this, not some something material question and material answers. Question should be like this, which is beneficial to the entire humanity. And then he starts answering the question, how to live and how to live. Before telling how to live and how to live, he is telling how not to live. Means what not to do. So, Shukadev Goswami is telling, don't be a Grihamedhi, who is only uh, attached to his family members and materially engrossed. Do not be like that. Then he gives the original answer, what should we do? Hearing, chanting and remembrance of the Lord. Shotabhya, Kirtitabhyascha, Dheya, Bhuyascha, Nityada. And he also gives example that this process of hearing, chanting and remembering works. See my example. I have perfected my life by hearing, chanting and remembering about the Lord. And he has given Phalashruti also that if you perform this, you will develop unflinching faith towards the Supreme Presence of Godhead. And Harer Namanu Kirtanam or Harinam Sankirtan is the topmost Anga of Bhakti. So he has given the answer to the question of Parikshit Maharaj. So Bhagavatam could have ended here, but then he elaborates on these topics. And he speaks about that quality of life is more important than quantity and gives example of Khatvanga Maharaj who had only one muhurta of time and he utilized it in service of Krishna. Now, Shukadev Goswami has given the answer that bhakti is to be performed, but there are so many sages who, have, who are mystic yogis. So they have attachment to Ashtanga Yoga. So now they may question, but Ashtanga Yoga is also good. One should perform Ashtanga Yoga also. So Sukadev Goswami brings about this topic of Ashtanga Yoga and makes a com uh, like comparison between Ashtanga Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. So there are eight stages of Ashtanga Yoga. He also explains Ashtanga Yoga in detail. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, Pratahar, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Now Yama means don'ts like four regulatory principles, no meditating, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex. The, these are called don'ts. And then niyama means what is to be performed. In bhakti, the niyama is chanting 16 rounds, following ekadasi fast and all other things like sadhu sangha, nama kirtan, bhagavata shravan, mathura vasha, shrimurti rasabdhaya shivan. And in astanga yoga, there are some different niyamas. Asana means bodily posture sitting postures, pranayam means breath control, pratyahara means restricting the senses from the sense objects. So these are preliminary stages. Then comes the meditational stages. There are three stages of meditation, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Dharana is meditation on the overall form of the Supreme Law. In the dharana stage, there is a bifurcation. If the uh, performer of Ashtanga Yoga is a neophyte yogi and attached to and has material attachments, then the object of a dharana will be virata rupa. Prescribed object for dharana is virata rupa. If the yogi is an advanced yogi and has no material attachments, 
then the object of meditation is paramatma and on by meditating on paramatma he reaches to the level of dhyana then samadhi and brahman realization then ultimately liberation so this is a shorter path if you don't have any material attachments the path is shorter to attain liberation but if the yogi is neophyte and has material attachments he has to meditate on the virat rupa form and then if he is purified by that then he again meditates on paramatma and follows this path and he, if he does not purify even after meditating on the virat rupa then he has to go through all these different stages of krama mukti and finally attain liberation so this is a longer route so this is how sukadev goswami explains ashtanga yoga in detail eight limbs of ashtanga yoga is explained so ashtanga yoga is the opinion of some sages not sukadev goswami but sukadev goswami's opinion is bhakti but he also describes ashtanga yoga for a comparison so that people can understand the supremacy of bhakti so after explaining all this what we saw here that in the dharana stage if you have material attachments then you have to <clears throat> meditate on <clears throat> virat rupa if you don't have material attachment you can directly meditate on paramatma but most of the people they have material attachments so therefore meditation on the virat rupa is prescribed so in this context some features of virat rupa is explained that planetary systems are limbs of virat rupa lower planetary systems are the legs middle planetary system is belly upper planetary systems are like head and different representations of the limbs of virat rupa like one representation is the head is like brahmanas and the arms are kshatriyas the belly is vaishyas and the legs are sudras so there are different conceptions of virat rupa all those things are explained here now virat rupa is for them who has material attachments but those who don't have material attachment or those who have cultivated detachment their dharana ashray is paramatma now sukadev goswami will speak on this this other half how to cultivate detachment and how to meditate on paramatma so first he speaks about in the second chapter cultivating detachment material pleasure is like dreams so why are you attached to material pleasure reject the karma kandic rituals and accept renunciation accept the renounced order of life if you have palms then why do you need a pot if you have torn clothes on the road then why do you need sophisticated clothes to wear are the rivers dried up so why do you endeavor for like uh, your drinking water trees do not give charity then why are you worrying about your food so the meaning is not like we have to become sanyasi leaving everything the main thing is to serve krishna that's the ultimate thing krishna smaranam should be uh, there always now why sukadev goshen is speaking all these things he is telling to minimize our material endeavor so only do material endeavor to the extent it is required if it is required for your service towards krishna then it is fine but otherwise only for your sense gratification do not do material endeavor save all the time from material endeavor and give it to krishna that's the point this is cultivation of renunciation then after one cultivates renunciation gets rid of the material desires then he should meditate on paramatma and then uh, shukdev goswami describes the form of paramatma 8 inches form beautiful body eyes and garments of paramatma meditate unto this form of the supreme lord until samadhi we have dhyanam section in the third canto where lord kapila explains to his mother devoti there we have seen in dhyanam how the different limbs of the supreme lord is described now so we have uh, covered this uh, there are two dharana ashrayas for two different kinds of yogis if the yogi is neophyte then universal form or vishwarup is the object of meditation if the yogi is advanced then super soul is the object of meditation this is chapter 2 here sukadev goswami further explains that how ashtanga yoga is very complex so the main purpose of explanation of ashtanga yoga 
is so that we can appreciate bhakti so he says ashtanga yoga is complex so bhakti is the best and he quotes brahma ji also nayatayanna shiva pantha vishata samshrite riha vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yoga yato bhavet so brahma ji is telling nayata anna shiva pantha vishata samshrite riha there is no other auspicious method other than bhakti vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yoga yato bhavet so glories of bhakti yoga is explained and again he emphasizes on the process of bhakti yoga which is hearing chanting and remembrance of the supreme lord and what we will get by performance of bhakti we will get rid of our contaminated aspirations they will be purified and at the end of our life we will attain the lotus feet of the lord again he is telling how to perform this bhakti yoga hearing chanting remembering now shukdev goshami has given the answer to parikshit maharaj's question which is bhakti and he has also made a comparison with ashtanga yoga and then he told that bhakti is better and he has also discouraged all the karmakandic rituals so karmakanda is not the way ashtanga yoga is not the way bhakti is the way up to this point he has established now within bhakti also how to make that bhakti more pure one may say okay i am doing bhakti sometimes i am doing bhakti of krishna sometimes i am doing bhakti of some other demigods so that is not pure bhakti प्योर भक्ति मीन्स व्यवसायात्मिका बुद्धि एक कुरुनंदन बहुशाखा ही अनंत बुद्धयो व्यवसाय सो द प्योर डिवोटी ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज ओनली डिवोटेड टू कृष्णा नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर डेमी गॉड वर्सिप इज डिस्करेज सो डेमी गॉड वर्सिप वर्सेज प्योर भक्ति इमेच्योर पीपल दे वर्सिप द डेमी गॉड्स टू फुलफिल देअर मेटेरियल डिजायर एंड डिफरेंट डेमी गॉड्स एंड डिफरेंट बूंस आर डिस्क्राइब इन भगवदगीता कृष्ण से That satya swadhya yukta tasya radhanam ihate lavate cha tatavakam an mayai ba bihitan hita. The demigods cannot act independently and give boons to their worshippers. They have to depend on Krishna to give boons to their worshippers. So why not directly worship Krishna? Even if you have material desires, you should worship Krishna, not the demigods. Akama sarva kama oba moksha kama udharadhi tibrena bhakti jogena jayeta purusham param. a kama whether you are free from all desires or you are sarva kama you have all material desires or whether you are moksha kama you are aspiring for liberation in all the three cases tibrena bhakti yogena jajeta purusham param worship the supreme lord with intense devotional service that's the way so now sukhdev goshami has clearly established the supremacy of bhakti and within bhakti also he has delineated the path of pure devotional service now <clears throat> this conversation is being quoted by suta goshami to the sages of naimisharan headed by sonokarishi after hearing up to this point sonokarishi got very excited to hear more and he started sharing his realization he is very much pleased to hear about the process of bhakti he is telling आयुर्हरति वैपुषा उद्यान स्तंशो तशर्ते तत्नो नीता उत्तम श्लोक वर्तया हि से विथ राइज राइजिंग ऑफ द सन एंड सेटिंग ऑफ द सन वन डे इज एलिमिनेटेड फ्रॉम अवर लाइफ आयुर्हरति अवर लाइफ स्पैन इज डिक्रीज बाय वन डे विथ एवरी राइजिंग एंड सेटिंग ऑफ द सन बट दिस रूल डज नॉट अप्लाई टू द डिवोटीज their life span is not reduced why because they have perfectly utilized each and every moment in krishna service why it is told that one day is eliminated from our life that means we lose one more day in our life to make our life perfect but a devotee has utilized every moment in krishna service so he has not wasted any time so therefore the days are not eliminated but the days are properly utilized for a devotee but for a non devotee days are eliminated from their life <clears throat> and then sonakrishi also says one who does not hear this message of the supreme lord his ear holes are like a snake hole his tongue is like a frog's tongue his upper body like a heavy burden his hands are like his decorated hands are like dead hands his eyes are like eyes on peacock feather which cannot see his legs are like the trunk which cannot work his heart is like still framed and the person is dead 
And so all his features are useless if he is not utilizing in the service of the Supreme Lord. So this is the realization of Saunakarishi by hearing from Sutta Gosha. And then Saunakarishi inspires him to speak more, speak more about the conversation between Sukadev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj. Now Sutta Goswami continues and continues to narrate the conversation between Parikshit Maharaj and Sukadev Goswami. So Parikshit Maharaj has heard from Sukadev Goswami that Bhakti is better, Bhakti is the best. It is even better than Ashtanga Yoga. And how to perform Bhakti? Shrotabhya Kirtitabhyascha Dheya Puyyascha Nityara. Shravanam, Kirtanam and Smaranam. So I need to hear about the Supreme Lord. Now what should I hear? Parikshit Maharaj is telling that okay, I need to hear about Supreme Lord. And he also expresses his conviction in the process of devotional service. He says to Sukadev Goswami, yes, I am convinced about this process of bhakti and I want to perform this. I want to hear more about Krishna. But there are so many topics related to Krishna which are worth hearing. There are so many pastimes of Krishna. But what should I hear first? Parikshit Maharaj is telling, tell me first those pastimes of Krishna which are related to the creation, maintenance and destruction of the material world, which is, tell me more about Purusha Avataras. So this is one lesson. We should not directly jump to the Rasalila or the spiritual pastimes of Krishna. We should first hear the Krishna's pastimes with uh, the, this material world in the form of Purusha Avataras. Then we will realize the majesty of Krishna. Then we are eligible to enter into the spiritual pastimes. So Sukadev Goswami became very happy that, oh, you have asked me to describe about Krishna. And Sukadev Goswami as a liberated soul always finds opportunity to speak about Krishna. So Sukadev Goswami is very thankful to Parikshit Maharaj. He started offering prayers to the Supreme Lord in this fourth chapter. And then he will speak on Purushavataras from chapter 5. So here the in this chapter, prayers of Sukadev Goswami is a big portion. Sukadev Goswami says that you are inconceivable, my Lord. You liberate devoted annihilate demons. You are the supreme enjoyer. Glorifying you nullifies our sinful activities. Surrendering unto you removes all our attachments. All spiritual activities are meaningful only when they are done for you, Krishna. Shelter of You are the shelter of your devotees and you purify our sinful tendencies. You are super soul. You are pati or bhokta, enjoyer of everything. You are the giver of liberation and you have given knowledge to Brahma. You are the cause of all living entities like that. Sukadev Goswami glorifies the Supreme Lord and then in the chapter 5, he starts answering the questions of Parikshit Maharaj. But Sukadev Goswami says that I will not answer this question out of my own opinion and knowledge, but I will quote another conversation which happened between Narada and Brahma and Narada asked same questions to Brahma and whatever Brahma replied, I will just quote that conversation to you. So Narada must ask six questions to Brahmaji regarding the creation, maintenance and destruction of this material world. Yad rupam, yad adhishtanam, yad srishtam, yad samsthanam, yad param, yad cha. Yad rupam means what are the characteristics of this material world? Yad Adhishtanam, what is the background of this world? Yad system from whom it is created? Yad Samsthanam, after annihilation, where it goes? Yad Param, who is the controller of this uh, whole material cosmic manifestation? Yad Cha, what are the different ingredients? And Narada says, you know everything. You are the Vidhata, you are the creator. But still, you meditate on someone. Always you are in Samadhi. Do you meditate on, is there anyone who is greater than you? Narada Muni obviously knows that the Supreme Lord Krishna is the Supreme Person of God. If Narada Muni would have not known this, he would not become Narada Muni. So Narada Muni definitely knows, but he is asking Brahmaji so that Brahmaji answers. And when Brahmaji will answer, this will be written in Srimad Bhagavatam, which is authoritative. So then Brahmaji is telling, I am not the Supreme, I am creator. I am not the creator. I recreate what is already created by the Lord. Bhashman jathasma shakaleshu nijeshu teja shiyam ki yad prakade yad tabi yad vadatra 
ब्रह्माय जैसा जगदंड विधान करता गोविंद आदि पुरुषम तम हम भजाम सो ब्रह्मा जी स्टेलिंग आई एम लाइट सूर्योगंत स्टोन आई ओनली रिफ्लेक्ट द लाइट ऑफ कृष्णा वट कृष्णा हेज ऑलरेडी क्रिएट आई रिक्रिएट फॉलोइंग हिज इंस्ट्रक्शन ओनली ड्यू टू माया पीपल थिंक मी एंड द डेमी गॉड्स टू बी सुप्रीम देन ब्रह्मा जी स्टार्ट आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम नारद मुनि यद रूपम वट आर द डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड देर आर फाइव कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स द्रव्य काल कर्म स्वभाव जीवा जीवा द लिविंग एंटिटी स्वभाव इज देयर नेचर karma is their fluidity baggage kala is the uh, time which is the energy of the supreme lord and dravya different elements of the material cosmic manifestation and all these things are nothing but energies of vasudev or narayan second question is jad adhisthanam and he combines this question with the fifth question jad param who is the controller of this material world and who is the background of this material world and the answer is narayan narayana paro deva narayan is the background and controller of this material world and he only expands as brahma vishnu maheshwar and creates maintains and annihilates this world then yat system how the creation took place two phases of creation are described one is karana srishti and another is karya srishti yatah srishtam third question so karana srishti means creation of the elements and karya srishti means using those elements the actual creation secondary creation so what are the different elements this earth water fire air ether these are the five gross elements in sound touch form taste smell these are pancha tan matras so here from mahavishnu kala karma and swabhava the jivas are impregnated into this material nature into the pradhana then by the kala shakti of the lord the three modes of material nature are agitated and forms mahatattva then from mahatattva comes sutra tattva which is in rajas mahatattva in sattva gun then sutra tattva in raja raja gun then ahankara in tama gun so this ahankara is the uh, root of this material creation which is predominantly in tamas therefore this material world is by default it is tamasic or it is ignorance the ignorance is everywhere darkness is everywhere we need external light sources to light up this world so ahankara or which is predominantly in tamas is the root cause of this material creation now ahankara in mode of goodness gives rise to mind and sense devas devatas and ahankara in the mode of passion gives rise to prana ten senses intelligence ahankara in mode of ignorance gives rise to pancha tanmatras and five gross elements so here the products we got is the material elements which are responsible for creation so therefore this is called karana srishti now using this material uh, elements of creation 23 elements assembly of these elements happens by the lord's maya shakti and then garvada kushai vishnu enters into the universe expands into birat birat rupa and the universe is manifested finally that is called karya srishti so the answer to the third question is also given yatha srishtam and in this connection again virat rupa is explained in the chapter 6 the remaining two questions yatcha and yat samsthanam is explained yatcha means what are the ingredients of this material creation and how this material creation is annihilated so lord is the material cause and effective cause of this material world brahma ji gives a comparison between material and spiritual world and he also says i can say think do nothing wrong because i have accepted the lotus feet of hari in my heart so whatever i am speaking must be true because i am serving the supreme lord so by his potency there is power in my speech and then yat samsthanam how it is annihilated after annihilation the universe goes back into the body of mahavishnu and brahma ji then says whatever i understand i have explained you up to my capacity but lord is inconceivable it is not possible for anyone to know the supreme lord in completeness but still whatever i have uh, whatever knowledge i have i have shared and 
that's my duty and that's the duty of all living entities to glorify the supreme lord according to their own capacity so answer to all these six questions are only narayan if you see jadrupam characteristics of the uh, of this world are different energies of narayan jad adhisthanam the background is also narayan jad system the creation also happens from narayan jad samsthanam after annihilation it goes back into the body of mahavishnu he is only the controller and he only supplies ingredients so everything is narayan therefore this chapter is called purusha sukta confirmed in purusha sukta prayers also lord narayan is glorified to be uh, everything who is controlling maintaining everything now after explaining all this creation lord's past time in relation to the material world so brahma ji has explained lord's past time in relation to the material world or creation maintenance and destruction and now brahma ji also enumerates briefly other sweet past times or madhurya past times or spiritual past times of the supreme lord brahma ji says in the seventh chapter i have explained the purusha avataras but lord has lord has different lila avataras also so he briefly enumerates them and describes them krishna is the source of all incarnation and krishna leelas also in brief he explains it is easy to count the atoms in the universe but difficult to count krishna's qualities and past times even ananta says could not enumerate them without the mercy of krishna it is difficult to understand him how to get mercy of krishna by non duplicious surrender we get mercy of krishna then we can understand krishna and cross beyond this material ocean examples prahlad maharaj manu dhruva maharaj janaka maharaj muchukunda they have done this and if someone is trained by pure devotees even degraded people can be also elevated like narad muni trained migari migari got elevated by pure bhakti one can understand bhagavan the supreme lord beyond brahman and paramatma so now after explaining all this answering six questions of narada and giving extra things which is lord spiritual past times lila avataras after, after explaining everything lord's past times in relation to the material world and his spiritual past times a complete package brahma ji gave to narad muni then brahma ji instructs narad muni that i spoke in brief you have this knowledge about krishna now you expand it and preach this knowledge okay so brahma ji has given this instruction now parikshit maharaj is hearing this conversation between brahma and narada from the lotus leaves of sukadev goswami this ends the chapter 7 in chapter 8 after hearing this description from sukadev goswami parikshit maharaj is asking some new fresh questions uh, in the beginning parikshit maharaj had two questions how to leave and how to leave then sukadev goswami answers that question bhakti compares with ashtanga yoga also discourages karma kanda glorifies renunciation discourages demigod worship so bhakti answer is given now in chapter 4 parikshit maharaj says okay bhakti is the process and within bhakti i should do hearing what should i hear okay first speak me about the uh, lord's past time in relation to the creation maintenance destruction then sukadev goswami quotes the brahma narada sambhad and gives all the details of creation maintenance destruction also he narrates as brahma ji narrated to narad muni the spiritual past times of the lord also so after hearing the material and spiritual past times of krishna parikshit maharaj is asking some new fresh questions he is telling tell me about narada's further preaching how so brahma ji instructed narad muni to preach this knowledge then what did narad muni do further and continue narration of shrimad bhagavatam do not stop because i have only got 7 days speak anything you like which is beneficial for me and parikshit maharaj expresses his faith and conviction in the process of devotional service inspire sukadev goswami to speak more parikshit maharaj is telling shrinvatam shraddhaya nityam grinnatam cha swacheshtitam kalena nati dirghena bhagavan bishate ridhi if one hears shrimad bhagavatam with shraddha regularly and grinnatam cha swacheshtitam and applies those teachings of shrimad bhagavatam in his own life then kalena na ati dirghena 
in a very short period of time dirgha means long ati dirgha means very long na ati dirgha means not very long kalena means within a very short period of time or within not within a very long period of time means in near future that person is able to capture krishna within his heart krishna as shrimad bhagavatam enters heart through ear holes and destroys contamination of heart pravishta karna randhena so krishna enters through the karna randha and goes into the heart and then hmm, dhunoti samalam krishna shalilasya jatha sarat so krishna cleanses our heart nashta prayesha avadreshu nittam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati nishthiki nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nitram bhagavata sevaya so all the abhadra or inauspicious things in our heart is destroyed by hearing shrimad bhagavatam so parikshit maharaj is inspired to hear more he expresses that and inspires sukadev goshami to speak more so these are new fresh questions by parikshit maharaj so that sukadev goshami can keep on speaking so he has given more questions speak on these topics how did spiritual jiva attain a material body form of garbhada kosha i vishnu form of karnada kosha i vishnu kirada kosha i vishnu form of hiranna garva kalpa vikalpa kala karmic reactions creation of places inhabitants in universe dimension of universe activities of devotees varnashram yugas duration yuga dharma activities yuga avataras so all these questions by parikshit maharaj will be explained in detail till the last canto of shrimad bhagavatam so shrimad bhagavatam first and second canto are like introduction and 3 4 5 6 up to 12 canto is elaboration of these topics which are asked by parikshit maharaj and then parikshit maharaj says i have asked you some questions but there may be some topic which is beyond my knowledge i don't know about that therefore i have not asked that question that explain me about that thing but you are all you are all knowing personality you know everything so whatever i have asked you you tell me the answer and also those questions that i have not asked you but you feel it is important for me you please answer those questions also and this is how parikshit maharaj glorifies sukadev goswami and inspires him then we have this two very important questions so sukadev goswami starts answering these questions so we have question 1 and question 2 how did spiritual jiva attain a material body and the form of garbhada kosha vishnu and in chapter 9 sukadev goswami gives answer to these questions by citing another conversation which happened between garbhada kosha vishnu and brahma previously sukadev goswami has given one answer by citing the brahma narada sambad now sukadev goswami is giving answer to another question two questions by citing the conversation between lord and brahma garbhada kosha vishnu and brahma so this is how sukadev goswami is a perfect mahajan who does not speak anything of his own he only quotes previous acharyas so we should all be like this if we are asked something we should immediately remember what prabhupad has said in this connection and we should cite that okay so first question is so in chapter 8 we have fresh questions by parikshit maharaj so first question uh, sukadev goswami is answering by citing the conversation between brahma and garuda kushai vishnu how jiva is having a material body jiva is spiritual but then how he has a material body it is dream aham mameti conception misidentification with matter okay so this is not a part of the chatushloki chatushloki will start from the answer to second question so this is an ordinary thing that how in dream we can sometime imagine that our head is cut off so prabhupada explains that if our head is cut then we lose the power of vision we can't see but in dream it is possible that we are seeing our head is cut in general it is not possible if our head is cut we cannot see that we lose our capacity of seeing but in dream it is possible so in dream impossible things become possible 
So therefore the jiva is spiritual. It cannot be material. But in a dream, we are imagining that we are material body. And we are thinking whatever uh, is the happiness and distress of this body, this is my happiness and my distress. So due to misidentification with matter, Jiva considers himself to be material body. Now about the form of Garvadokusha Vishnu, Sukadev Goswami is quoting uh, the Chatushloki Bhagavatam or conversation between Garvadokusha Vishnu and the Brahma. So Brahmaji, after doing tapasya, Garvadokusha Vishnu was satisfied and Garvadokusha Vishnu gave Brahmaji a vision of Vaikuntha, his own abode. Then Brahmaji had a conversation with Garvadokusha Vishnu. So first Brahmaji is asking some questions. Please tell me about your material and spiritual forms. Okay. Then second question, how are the different energies of the Lord working? How the Lord carries out his pastimes in relation to his energies. So Parikshit Maharaj is asking the same questions and Brahmaji has also asked the same questions. So therefore, uh, Sukadev Goswami is quoting that conversation. And at last, Brahmaji prays to the Supreme Lord, please give uh, guidance to carry out the service which you have given me, the service of creation without pride and bondage. So answers of the Lord is Chatushloki Bhagavatam, four slokas which are called Chatushloki Bhagavatam or entire Srimad Bhagavatam in four seed verses. First two verses is Sammanda Gyan, third verse is Prayojan and fourth is Avideya. So Lord says that his spiritual form existed before the creation remains even after the destruction. This universe is his material form. So Lord is beyond this material world. Anything without relation with Lord has no reality, is illusory energy. If we think some, something has existence and something is real, but that is not connect, that is not an energy of the Supreme Lord, then we are in illusion because everything is energy of the Supreme Lord. If we think something that this is not energy of the Supreme Lord, then we are in Maya. So therefore, this is the Sammanda Gyan that the Supreme Lord is beyond this material world and everything in this material world is his energies, including myself. I am also Lord's energy and I, I should be able to serve the Supreme Lord. That is my relation or Sammanda with the Lord. Yeah, okay. So in uh, the third verse of Chatushlogi, Lord is saying, Lord is within and outside of everything. That is the vision of pure devotee. In every place, a pure devotee is able to see the Supreme Lord. That is the ultimate culmination of bhakti, which is prayojan. And then in the fourth sloka, he explains about avideya. What is the process we should follow to attain this stage of pure devotion? This sadhana for attaining the Lord is bhakti. So bhakti is avideya and attaining the pure state or Krishna prema is prayojan and understanding the relationship between soul and Krishna, super soul or a living entity and Krishna is called Sammanda Gyan. So in this seed four verses, Brahmaji gets the answer from the Garvadokusha Vishnu. And this Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna has spoken to Brahma in the form of Garvatukasha Vishnu. Brahmaji has given this knowledge to Narada Muni. Just few chapters earlier we have seen how Brahmaji was speaking Bhagavatam to Narada Muni. Then Narada spoke to Vyasdev in the first canto, 4th, 5th, 6th chapter. Vyasdev has taught Srimad Bhagavatam to Sukadev Goswami and that is given to Parikshit Maharaj. And Suto Goswami also received Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadev Goswami and Suto Goswami giving to Naimi Sarinya sages and we are reading that Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is the uh, disciplic succession of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the last chapter or chapter 10 of the second canto, 10 topics of Srimad Bhagavatam are explained. These 10 topics are described in the 12 cantos. First two cantos are like introduction. So we have described this earlier that how Krishna's body is non-different from the cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. First and second canto is the lotus feet. Three and four are thighs. Fifth canto navel. Sixth canto chest. Seven and eighth canto arms. Ninth canto throat. 
10th candle is his lotus face, 11th candle forehead and 12th candle is head. Now there are 12 candles, different limbs of Krishna's body and there are 10 topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. Atra Sarga Vishwargascha Sthanam Poshanam Utaya Manvantara Ishanukatha Nirodha Mukti Ashraya. These 10 topics are explained. So in the first and second canto, it is basically introduction and some part of Sarga and Visharga. Third and fourth canto, Sarga Visharga explained in detail. Fifth canto, Sthanam. Sixth canto, Poshana. Seventh canto, Uti. Eighth canto, Manvantara. Ninth canto, Ishanukatha. Tenth canto is the Ashraya or Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, Mathura, Dwaraka, Hastinapur. Krishna's appearances. So, tenth canto highlight is Krishna. Eleventh canto is Mukti, how to get liberation. Uddhava Gita and Navayogandra, Nimi Sambad, all those things. Twelfth canto is Nirodha, four kinds of universe and annihilation, liberation of Parikshit Maharaj, all these things are explained. So, we have seen first and second canto, introduction. And in this chapter, later part, some amount of Sarga and Vishwaga will be explained. Then third and fourth canto in detail, Sarga Vishwaga will be explained. Creation by the Supreme Lord, subsequent creation by Brahma, Manu, pastimes of Lord Baraha comes. Fifth canto is the geography of the universe, Vedic cosmology, Bhumandala structure of universe. Sixth canto, Lord's protection to different devotees like Ajamila, Indra, Chitraketu. Uti, seventh canto, auspicious inclinations of Prahlad Maharaj, inauspicious inclinations of Hiranyakashipu. Pure devotional service and mixed devotional service, Varnashram Dharma. Eighth canto, Manvantara, different scheduled incarnation of the Supreme Lord in different Manvantaras, activities of the Lord during that. Ninth canto, Ishanukata, or uh, topics related to the Supreme Lord. Here comes a brief description of Ramachandra and other kings in the Sun and Moon dynasties. So this is our 10th canto, Krishna's pastimes. 11th canto is Mukti liberation. 12th canto is Nirodha or annihilation. So these topics are explained throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam. That introduction is given here. Now from 3rd canto onwards, in detailed description will start. So after, after explaining a brief overview of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th chapter of 2nd canto, Sarga and Visarga, these two topics are started very briefly, that how Sarga <clears throat> or the primary creation by the Supreme Lord Mahavishnu happens, creation of the different elements, gross organ, subtle organ, sense devata, astana matras, then from Mahavishnu comes Karvadokosha Vishnu, Virat Rupa, creation of dhatus and prana, mind intelligence, all those things are part of Sarga, briefly is described. And then Visarga is also briefly described, how Lord accepted the form of Brahma, and Brahma had many sons, Manus, Devatas, animals, humans are created. So, this is how Sukadev Goswami is explaining to Parikshit Maharaj about Sarga and Visarga in very brief. Then, Sukadev Goswami told that now I will explain you Visarga in more detail. And to explain that, Sukadev Goswami quotes another conversation between Maitre and Vidura because the conversation between Maitre and Vidura covers this Sarga and Visarga part in very detail. So Parikshit Maharaj, when uh, so Sukadev Goswami is answering the questions uh, and given a brief overview of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam and started Sarga and Visarga in detail. And to explain Sarga Visarga in detail, Sukadev Goswami is quoting the conversation between Maitre and Vidura. And he is about to start that. Right? He has given a very brief description of Sarga and Visarga. And he is about to quote the conversation between Maitre and Vidura. Sukadev Goswami is about to quote. Now, this conversation between Sukadev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj is being heard by the sages of Naimisharanya from the lotus leaves of Sutta Goswami. At this point, when Sutta Goswami just completed a brief description of Sarga and Visarga, and he is about to narrate the Maitre Vidur Sambad as narrated by Sukadev Goswami, 
by the inspiration of the Paramatma, Shonagarishi asks immediately, can you please speak us about the what happened to Vidura? You explained about Vidura in the first canto. Now, can you explain about what happened to Vidura? Next. So, in course of the speaking of Bhagavatam, Sukadev Goswami was, was about to quote the Maitra Vidur Sambhad. And Sutta Goswami was also about to quote the Maitra Vidur Sambhad as quoted by Sukadev Goswami. And at that moment, by the inspiration of the Supreme Lord, the very particular suitable question came from the lotus leaves of Sonakarishi. And Sutta Goswami told, yes, I'm going to quote that conversation now. And then in the third canto, we will hear that conversation. So Sutta Goswami is speaking to Namisaranya sages. And within that loop, Sukadev Goswami is speaking to Parikshit Maharaj. What they are speaking about Maitre Vidur Sambhad. So Maitre Vidur Sambhad will start in the third canto. So there many questions will come, which are which will match the questions of Parikshit Maharaj. And be, because these questions are matching, therefore, so Parikshit Maharaj asked some few uh, fresh questions in chapter 8 of second canto. And many of those questions are answered in the Maitre Vidur Sangbad. Therefore, Sukadev Goswami is quoting that. And therefore, Sutta Goswami is also quoting that. Okay. So we will see this in the next time. We will start third canto. Now I can understand these loops of conversations are very uh, confusing. So I have decided to make a nice slide using what chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam is going on in which conversation, which chapters are going on in Maitre Vidur Sangbad. Then when we come to the outer loop, when we come to the loop of Sutta Goswami and Naimi Sarana sages, and when we jump into the uh, loop of Sukadev Goswami Parikshit Maharaj, and when we jump into Maitra Vidur, when we jump into Brahma Narad, when we jump into Garbhata Goswami Vishnu and the Lords, this is very confusing. So I will make a clear slide, maybe in the next class, and we will start with that. Then everything will be very clear. Okay. So we will end here. Second canto overview is complete. So in the next class, we'll try to cover third canto. It's a big canto, so maybe we need to go a little faster. Parantraya Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Hari 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 H